When are we getting started? Now? Oh man, oh, hey, hang on, hang on. Six foot, everybody? All right. Welcome, everybody, to Festool Live. It must be, it's Friday and it's 12 noon. I'm gonna get my sanitizer over here. Oh boy, another week. Believe it or not, it's episode six. And we wanna do a really special episode today of, I'm gonna say it right now, my favorite tool the track saw. That's our topic for the day. But number one, why a track saw? But number two, how to set it up for success. And I always call this when I do a training, the top five things you need to know about the Festool track saw. But first, I gotta say all my accolades to everybody in the room. Big D's on this camera. I got C here, he's our producer. I got over here on the whiteboard, Rick, the man, the myth, the modern day legend, Bush. Brent Shively, he's on line answering your questions, as well as Jason Bent. Jason! Uh, Bent's woodworking. Okay, get that out of the way. Now, I say this every week, stay safe. I hope you're all healthy. We'll get through all of this. But I do want to call out and tell you, we are open for business, as well as you're open for business. So keep remodeling, <laughs> keep painting, keep woodworking, keep building cabinets. Just keep building, we're gonna be there for you. Okay, enough of all of that, let's talk about track saws. Now, when I was given this task to talk about track saws, I started thinking, there's gonna be a lot of people who are tuning in that don't know why I need a track saw, <laughs> okay? 18 years ago, I didn't know I needed a track saw. I found out, someone showed me something with a track saw and it blew me away. And I wanna show you, okay, why a track saw. Yes, here's a track. I'm gonna use the multifunction table which we talked about last week, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to set it up. But what I wanna do is I wanna make a cut because I wanna show you something that got me. All right, watch. I'll show you the technique on how to make sure it's married to the track and everything. I'm gonna show you how to set depth. I'm gonna show you how to cut a splinter guide, okay? But what I wanna do is I'm just gonna make a simple cross cut. Because remember, Festool's a system and you gotta understand a couple of things. Here, I'm gonna start it up. I'm gonna make the plunge. Okay, I'm gonna make a simple cut. All right? Now, what I want to show you is this. The blade that comes with the track saw, or the TS55 REQ, is a 48 tooth cross cutting blade. Okay? Everybody thinks, come in here, cameraman, so you can see this. Look at this cut. There is not one single daggone splinter on there. That's why you buy a track saw. And look, look at this. That top veneer, I'm cutting cross grain on a piece of plywood. That cross grain, it wants to peel up and chip. Think about how you've done this in the past there, craftsman. You have taken this and you put blue tape on here. You've taken a shred edge and put it on there. And then you take a, a razor blade or a veneer knife and cut it. And then you make your cut. And then you peel the blue tape and you're still pull, pulling fiber up. This gets really thin on there. Almost looks like it's sprayed on, okay? Now everybody thinks it's the blade as I come back full circle. The, the quality of cut on the side is the blade. Look, there's not a single daggone uh, saw mark on there. But check this out. It's this piece of plastic that's holding that fiber of the plywood from coming up. Okay, and you're gonna see here, and as I've trained people over the years, this is what I've learned. A lot of people come in and go, hey look, your splinter cut's not cut all the way, and it's not, and it's not cut all the way through. The only time it should ever be cut all the way through is if you're connecting rails. Yes, I'll cover that today. Okay, so, enough saying, oh by the way, it doesn't matter if I'm cutting at 90 degrees. Check this out, I'm gonna take this saw, I'm gonna lay this back down. Let's have a little bit of fun with this, okay? I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna tilt it. Look, I'll use the multifunction table. With the multifunction table, you have repeatability. I'm just gonna take it like this. I'm gonna move it like this. Let's say I'm gonna take a 15 degree cut, okay? And I'm gonna bring it in like this. Okay, now you don't need the multifunction table. The TS55 comes with a 1400 rail, 55 inches, okay? So I'm gonna take that, now I'm gonna take it one further step. 
And when somebody showed this to me, I'll call him out. I'll call him out. His, his name was Eddie Brillinger. When he showed this to me the first time, he made a compound angle cut. He took this and he tilted it to about 15 degrees. See how I'm locking the trunnion back here and out front here. And watch, I'm going to make this cut again. To do this on a table saw, think about it. If you've ever cut a 45 on a table saw, at 90 and you've got a 12 inch uh, wide cut rip, you set your the table saw fence at 12 inches. But what if you have to cut a 45? It's kind of like moving the blade at 45 and then bringing that over. Here, I just make my witness mark and watch. Now here's a tip I'll give you. Anytime I tilt the saw, I always put my hand on the deck here. That way there, it doesn't tip and I get a perfect cut that way. So think about this, look, look at this cut. I set it at 15 degrees, I'm gonna get this in the light. Look, there's not a single splinter. And when I take that with my off fall, you get a perfect compound angle. Look at that. All right, good. So that's why a track saw. Now, our track saw, the TS55 REQ, goes from minus one all the way to 47 degrees. So you're gonna get that splinter free cut all the way through those degrees. Okay, let's get down to the basic bones. And five things you should do when you set this up and know the usage of it as well. I'm going to take this, take the tilt off, and let's just say this is the rail that I have. I have a splinter guard on here, okay? I need to cut that. So if we look on the bottom of the saw, you're going to see this. I'm going to be turning this. Look right here. I'm going to be turning it. You see this? That's an eccentric cam. It's basically, see how it's thinner there and thicker there? That, as I do that, what that does is that pushes this piece of plastic. So that pinches this top rib. In other words, when you put this on the track, and I'm going to get in the way, and I apologize. Listen, if we can hear this, see that? That's lateral tolerance. What I want to do is knock that out before I cut the splinter gad. So I take that and I tighten it all the way. Now, that doesn't look good, right? <laughs> okay, so what you want to do is you want to loosen ever so slightly and grab it here, not here but right here, and you knock out the lateral tolerance so it slides with no movement. I'm basically ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook it up. I'll talk about depth in a minute. I'm just gonna reset it really quick. Now, I've heard this over the years. This splinter guard should be on a piece of plywood or foam board to cut. It, or you don't need to. Look, see this? I've cut it off of support. With, with support and no support, I still get a great cut. Okay, but one thing I wanna show you Okay, I'm gonna back step here. Once, come over here cameraman so you can see this. See this? I'm nice and tight, but once one of the cams comes off, you see how it wobbles? Look, there's no wobble there, it wobbles here. So think about this. That's why on this, and you'll see it in a minute, that splinter guard is never cut all the way through. You can if you want, just don't Assume that it's going to line up perfectly if this is cut all the way through because one of those cams may come through. Your, your absolute is between here and here. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up my dust extraction, lock it on, okay, and cut this splinter guide so you can see it. <clears throat> I've heard, oh, you can, I've heard from people, they say, oh, you should slow it down to cut it. It doesn't matter. I always go full speed, but I always make sure the cams are engaged. I'm gonna make my cut. And go from point to point. So now, wherever I take this, you see right here to right here, whether I cut at minus one or all the way to 47, it's gonna cut right on that daggone line, splinter free. That's why a track saw. Okay, so I have that set up. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover one of the top questions we get in training. We have tracks available solid lengths from 32 inches, 800 millimeters, all the way to look, look at that long one up there. Okay, that's 5,000 millimeters, a little over 16 feet. Okay, now, that, that, that folds up pretty good once. <laughs> Okay, what you want to do is say you got to do a long rip on the job site. Okay, you need to connect rails. Now, I've seen so many ways of connecting rails. I've done it a bunch of different ways. 
until I got a job at Festool and Steve Bay showed me how to connect rails properly. Okay? And you want to know something? You don't have to go out and buy a bunch of fancy stuff to do this. You already have it. What you need is you need two rail connectors. And you remember last week I showed you the difference between a, a rail connector and an MFT connector? It has the slotted screws. So what I like to do when I show people how to set up guide rails, okay? Yeah, I got these little short rails, okay, for demonstration purposes. I always take, and you see how I have these rail connectors? I always put one in the bottom rib, okay, like this, and I always offset them. It's just the way I do things, and it's easier. Look, once I find one, the other one slides in. Now, first thing you want to do is you want to put a, a little bit of space in there. I usually take a business card and fold it up and tuck it in there, okay? Because we guarantee <coughs> that the aluminum extrusion is extruded perfectly parallel, like all extrusion. But we don't guarantee it's perfectly 90, okay? Because the way it gets guillotined and cut off the extruder. So sometimes these aren't perfect. Well, that's why you always put a little bit of space. Now, if we can come in here, hopefully we get the right angle here. I'm going to unplug this so we have it. I'll just set it right there. You see the cams? Watch. You know what? I'm going to move so you can all see this. Okay? You see how I have it spanned across the gap? Check this out. If I tighten these all the way, guess what? It brings it in perfect alignment. I've seen people take straight edges and put them here. I've seen people take straight edges here. I don't like that. Do you know why? Some people I know think a 2 by 4 <laughs> is a straight edge. Here, you're actually using the saw that rides on it to bring it in perfect alignment. So what I do is I take it like this. I tighten this screw like this. See if I can get it in there like this. And if I can't get access to the screw at an angle, I just take the saw and I tilt it like this. And then I shimmy it over and tighten them from underneath the other two and I'm good to go. Hopefully that one helped. Okay, so that's how you connect rails. Now, while I still have this out, I want to talk about setting depth. Okay, that's one of the top five things. Everybody gets crazy on this, and you don't have to. It's wicked easy. Check this out. This is a piece of material I'm going to cut. Yeah, we could say it's three quarter, 18 millimeter, whatever. Okay, but I'm gonna take this. You take the rail, the guide rail, put it on here and watch. Okay, you have it all set up. See this, this is my depth setting. I just take it like this, and I move it with my thumb. It's spring loaded, and I can move it up and down, okay? Look. I zero it out. See how that's touching? It's bottomed out, it's zeroed out. And then I come over here and I pinch this and I move it right to this little magnesium aluminum uh, piece right here. And then, and then I add a notch or two so I cut all the way through. It's that easy. Zero it out, you don't have to understand the scale. But if you wanna understand the scale, come on over here so I can explain it. Okay, see what it says FS? That is taking into consideration the thickness of the guide rail. So when I set this up, say this is three quarter, I know it's three quarter, watch. I set it right there, FS is a five millimeter offset. I set it at three quarter and add a couple of notches. Okay, this here is the true depth of cut. It's a five millimeter offset, because guess what? That's the thickness of the guide rails, five millimeter, when it's on these little PFTE strips. Follow? So that way there, that's your true depth of cut off of the guide rail. Got it? Okay, good. Connecting rails, cutting the splinter guard, setting depth. Now, I'm going to set us up for a long rip. All right, but first, I wanna talk about changing the blade. Let's talk about blade selection first. Come on over. I have it all set up here. Now, I don't know if you know this, Okay, but do you know in the Festool tooling that we have, whether it's jigsaw blades, track saw blades, Capex blades, they're color coded. If it's a yellow, it's for wood. This is the one here, 48 tooth, that comes with the TS55 REQ. Okay, if it's red, it means it's for solid surface or plastics, laminates. All right. If it is a green, that means it's a specialty product. And if you look at this one, this only has four teeth, but the polycrystalline diamond, and that's for cutting uh, fiber cement board. 
All right, now let's talk about the blade I'm going to use. It's yellow, okay? I'm going to change the blade because I'm going to be ripping over here with this rail. I'm a, and you'll see it a little bit better in a few minutes, this eastern white pine. Okay, this is what we use for our interior door class. I'm going to straight line rip it. Okay, <clears throat> this blade here, this is the one that came with the Emerald Edition, is a great blade for that. But I want to take it a step further. I want to switch it out to Panther blade. And I want you to understand this. When it says Panther on it, that's our general purpose ripping blade. It's still an alternating top bevel. It's kind of like a table saw. On your table saw, you're not going to use your 60 tooth blade to do ripping. You automatically switch it to your 24 tooth flat raker, okay, for ripping if you're doing extensive ripping, okay? Same thing with the Festool system. Here's what I'll tell you. And this will answer a question for you. Hey, it seems like my TS-55 might be bogging down a little. Switch the blade. <laughs> okay? Less teeth in the curve. It's a very common question we get. So, let's, let's talk through it. It's really easy. Anytime you see fast fix, come in here, cameraman, so you can see this. See where it says fast fix? Anytime you see fast fix with the Festool system, that means I'm changing a blade or some tooling. Okay? This has to be past an inch just so you know, okay? I'm gonna open that up, three things happen. Number one, it locks the blade down, okay, so you can access the screw. Okay, I'm gonna take the outside splinter guide off. Number two, it locks the ABBA shaft, okay? And number three, check this out, this is such a cool safety feature. In case I didn't take off the plug-it cord, look, it locks, the, it locks the switch off. We're always safety conscientious here at Festool. Okay, so, oh my God. See this right here? This is the wrench or the hex key that comes with it, which stores right on board. <laughs> How many times have you gone with your circular saw and you're trying to find the case with the wrench when you're changing a blade? No, everything is right here. It's all about saving time with Festool. Okay, now watch. I'm gonna take this and spin it off. Anybody know what that is? That's a riving knife. If this, uh, if I was ripping like, and I always talk about two by material, if I'm ripping two by material and it's case hardened, um, you, got, you know this when you have it on a table saw, it either splays out like this or pinches the blade. This keeps it from pinching the blade when your material is case hardened. When I take this out, see that right there? Comes out and I'm gonna put the panther blade because we're gonna be doing some ripping, all right? Just like that. I'm gonna take that, you see there's two little tabs on there. I'm gonna put it in here just like this, so it settles right in there, and I'll put the screw back in. I always joke around when I'm doing training, but if you remember any increment of measurement with the Festool system, remember five millimeter. Just about every major screw that you need adjustment on is five millimeter. Thickness of the guide rail is five millimeter. The cutter that comes with the Domino 500 is five millimeter. Cool. Some people even say my IQ is five millimeter. I believe them. Okay, so I'm gonna put the splinter guide back on, outside splinter guide, I'm gonna tighten that up. I'm gonna reset it, okay, and I'm gonna set the depth. Now, I'm gonna clean up a little and shuffle things off to the side real quick. Okay, so we can set up for a long rip, because now comes the fun part. I am gonna show you basic technique on using the saw, okay? Because a lot of questions come up when people get started with it, okay? like. Hey, uh, should I start the saw first or should I plunge first and then start it? Hey, um, one of the things I get all the time is there may be something wrong with my saw. It keeps kicking on me. No, it's, that's not the reason. And I'll show you, because guess what? It happened to me. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get a long rail because I have one. I'm going to slip it over here like this. I'm going to set it up. Okay, now. <clears throat> My buddy Greg glued these up for me. Okay, and they're pretty even. So I'm gonna use a quick setup tool that I have right here in my sustainer. Okay. Actually, I have it right here. This is for plunge cutting, by the way. That's another video or another Festool Live we can do. But I'm just gonna take a little bit off, about six millimeter. Okay, I'm gonna set it up. Now, the other thing I'll tell you is this. Did you know you can clamp your guide rail down so it doesn't move? Now, everybody will look at this and go, oh man, it doesn't move on there because of these neoprene strips on here, right? Well, when I'm straight line ripping, okay, and hopefully I can answer a bunch of questions while I'm doing this, is I have found over the years that there is a little bit of technique and finesse with this. 
Okay, and I take it from my hand tool experience, and you'll see in a few minutes. Whenever I'm, stri <laughs> whenever I'm straight line ripping, I always clamp it. Now, when I'm working with plywood, eh, sometimes I don't clamp it because it doesn't move. But boy, you have undulations in these boards. It's always good to clamp. So I'm going to take that, and let's just get over here so you can see. See how that slides right in? Now, I'm going to give you a lot of technique on this. I always put a, a lot of rail forward of the board, and you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to take that and lock it in, okay? Now, I'm going to come down here with this clamp. Mm, somebody stepped on the Bluetooth. Okay, we'll set that over here. Now, here's a little tip I'm going to give you. I don't want to cut into my MFTs, okay? So I'm going to be cutting and I'll just drop it just below the channel there. But here's the thing. As I'm cutting this, okay, and I put enough pressure on here, this could move on me. So I learned a few years ago, I'm always learning with this. I'm going to take it like this. And as I set it up, I'm going to take my limit stop. This is for plunge cutting. And I'm going to get an even cut all the way down the board like this. I'll move this over. That's exactly where I want to be. Okay. What I like to do is hopefully we can get in here, cameraman. Okay. I take this clamp. See how I'm going to clamp it to the wood? But instead I clamp it to the table right here. That impedes the forward motion as I'm cutting. Okay. So it's pretty much locked and loaded. Whew. All right. Here we go. I'm just going to verify everything. I got no slop on there. Woo! You know what I have to do? I have to check my depths. Now I know as I do this, you're going to see where I'm going to cut all the way through. See that? I know the thickness of this is basically six quarter. The depth of cut on the TS-55 is two inches. Well, an inch and 15 sixteenths, but roughly two inches. So I'm going to cut all the way through. It doesn't matter. I'll have a few teeth below. All right, I'll set my splinter guard like this. And I'm going to come back. Now, here's the thing I want to show you. Before I put cord on, electrical, okay, I always do this. Hopefully get this. Come here, cameraman, come over here. Watch. See this? See how I drop? There's no, no electricity. I'm always going to station myself so this blade is forward of the board. In other words, if I started this up like this and went like this, it might, it might jump on me. Okay, especially if you have some wacky grain. So I always go like this. I'm pretty much ready to go. Now, when you start and stop, always remember, before you plunge, you, you, you attain full speed, and at the very end, you bring it up full speed. Then you let the power off. Good. I'm gonna put the plug-it cord. Remember plug-it cord? It's always a full quarter turn to lock on. Okay, now, as I do this, I want you to notice. Here's a question I used to get all the time. Hey, it's really, it's, it starts out perfect here, but in the middle, there seems like there's a little bow, and out here, the, in other words, the ends meet, but there's a slight gap in the middle. Okay, so I learned this the hard way. I was building a table with my buddy Brian, and I used to cut like this with the saw. I don't do that anymore. What I do is I get behind the saw. Think about it. Think if you've ever cut a dovetail. You don't cut a dovetail like this. You're always right behind the saw. Three fingers on that tote, one index finger points the way, and your thumb's on the horn. That's how I cut with the track saw. Check it out. And the other thing I'm going to tell you, this is a great tip. I learned this from my buddy Alan. Check this out. I always wrap the cord and the hose around my arm, okay, so it doesn't catch. Now, it's nice that we have this new hose here that's uh, got the sheathing on the outside. There's less tendency to catch, but this really ensures it. So watch, here's the technique. I'm gonna take it full speed. I'm gonna plunge. And see how I'm behind the saw? I let the saw do the work. And then at the very end, I bring it up full speed. Look at that. Now, Derek this morning came in and said, Sedge, I was cutting with my TS-55, and it sounded like there was a little growling. And you might have heard it just now. 
That little bit of growling is what we call constant speed under the load. It's part of our electronics. But what happens is we maintain perfect speed. When I have this set at six for lumbar, check it out. And here's, here's the reason we do that. If I would have hesitated or something on a table saw, what would I have on the side here? I'd have burning. With the Festool system, and this is why the Festool system, you won't see any burning. I don't care if this is pine. I don't care if it's walnut, cherry, purple hat, whatever. There's no burning. Okay? It's called constant speed under load, and it's one of the five things of our electronics and such. Okay. Boy, there was a lot of information in there, and there's so much I could go on for hours and hours and hours with the track saw. And by the way, I will. Okay? Future episodes of Festool Live. There's, there's a favorite accessor, accessory I have that I love teaching, and it it's, takes quite a bit of time to teach it, but once you see it in the track saw, it's awesome. Okay, oh, oh my God. Woo! My goodness. TS75. Boy, we got some good questions. Oh, I like the other, oh cool. Oh, cool! <laughs> okay, we got some good questions. Uh, why is it people think I have an accent? I don't get it. Okay, TS75. We knew it was gonna come up. Uh, that's why I have it out here. <clears throat> So I always, I always get a kick out of this when I do a training. I always ask, hey, just by looking at them, what's the difference? And someone will say in class, oh, one's bigger than the other. Oh, duh. By the way, they're pretty much identical. There's just a couple of extra things on the, the newer uh, TS-55. Um, <clears throat> the, the reason I'm saying identical is because the reason you buy a 75 is depth of cut. Now, the 75 does something that the 55 doesn't. You guys, gals, crafts people out there, you're all building slab furniture, right? Okay, you all want a waterfall, right? You all want to cut 45s on the slabs to waterfall that edge so the grain is continuous. It looks like it's waterfalling over. All right, the depth of cut on the 75 at 90 is two and three quarter, but on the 45, guess what it is? Two and an eighth. So you can cut up to two and an eighth slab, thickness of slab at a 45. As long as your slab is flattened right. Okay? That's why a 75 versus a 55. It also has something in there. It's a protective, um, it's called a slip clutch. Your Capex has a slip clutch. You'll never uh, shear the ABBA that way. Uh, it's a protective feature in case something uncannies in that grain or um, uh, an obstruction or obtrusion. Okay, how to cut a bevel cut at 45? Mitered corners or beveled corners? Let's do beveled corners. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come right back here uh, on the MFT to do that, to answer that question, because I kind of alluded to it when I cut that 15 degree cut. And hopefully, this is the answer to the question you're seeking. I'm gonna take my MFT. I'm gonna bring it back here. Let's just take it to a 90. Okay, just like this, lock it in, remember? Lock it in, lock it here. Perfect. I'm gonna get my T-lock hand sanitizer out of there. All right, get my saw back <coughs> here and here. I think I'm ready to go. Just gonna drop that, get it back over here. Okay, so I think I might have covered a little bit of this, but I want to make sure I answer this question. I'm going to take this, and let's, let's go back over here. When I'm cutting a 45, this doesn't work. That's your outside splinter guy, so I'm going to put that all the way up. Okay? I'm going to take this. There's a, right back here, there's a knob. Let me bring it over here. See the knob? Okay? That's part of, that's, and look, dual, it's dual locking. There's another one here. I'm going to loosen this. I'm going to take it. I'm going to bring it to 45. Okay? See where it's 45, see my cursor right there? Okay, I'm gonna take it and lock it in here, in here, all right. Okay, I got it like that, right? Now watch, when I put this on the track, it wants to tip, doesn't it? Okay. I also wanna set my depth. If I had it set at three quarter, I wanna go a little bit more. I just don't wanna cut through my table, hello. I'm gonna bring it back down, and I'll show you how to cut that 45. Okay, now, here's where I learned about this 
<coughs> I guess I was self-taught on it. I was cutting once and I was cutting a long rip at 45. And you see this right here? I was getting a flat spot right here. Okay, where you want a 45, you want that really crisp. You want that perfect point, long point. So what was happening is I was cutting, I was cutting like this, look. And you see how this wants to walk off that rib? Okay, it's easy. I showed you a few minutes ago. I'm just gonna get my dust extraction nozzle on, line up the arrows, twist it on. Take it like this, get this on, and get my plug it cord. Oh man, thanks Rick. That's why Rick's here. Do you know when I'm doing this? I don't want to do it with the panther blade, do I? Right? I want to do it with this blade. Okay, so let's do a let's do the blade change again. Look how easy this is. Man, we should get a clock on this. Somebody get somebody at home get the smartphone. Let's get a let's get a timer on this. Okay. Fast fix. Lock down. Man. Come on, get, oh, hey, hey, now. Let's get this. Anybody remember what size that is? Five millimeter. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. That comes off. This blade goes on, baby. There we go. This goes on. Remember, line up the nibs. They go right in those indentations. Okay, there you go. And there. Man, I would say that was less than a minute, but I wasn't trying to hurry too much. Okay, man, if this was a regular traditional circular saw, I'd still be looking for that wrench. Probably in that case I threw out years ago. Okay, <clears throat> good. All right, so let's set it at 45 again. Bam, 45, there you go, baby. Lock it in, I always lock it in there. Cool. All right, good. Now we get the hose on. Then we get the plug it cord on. And as I look up, I check with Rick. You got it now, buddy? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that was a save. Okay, now watch. See this? I'm gonna make sure I have enough depth there. I'm gonna start it up. Always remember, and that, that little extra dust you were seeing right there was I was cutting right into, I was cutting right into the MDF top because I added a little extra to cut all the way through. But once again, your 45 should come out absolutely and your drop edge perfect like that. All right, that's how you cut 45s. Hopefully that was the question you wanted. Okay, I saw, okay, I'm gonna answer this one because this is one I get all the time. Why do we have 47 and why do we have minus one? <laughs> okay. Um, let's, I think most people would understand 47. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if I have anything in here to explain that. Okay, so say, well, let's just do it like this. Say I'm doing a, a column wrap, okay, uh, in my basement to hide the pole. All right, and <clears throat> my boards are wonky or whatever. You never really cut it at 45, okay? Because the only thing you're going to see is that long point. Who cares what it looks like behind, okay? It's for back beveling or for scribing, okay? You always wanna back cut something. That's why 47. The minus one is one people have a a little bit of difficulty with, and you really shouldn't. Um, the best explanation or the best application that I always like to talk about is when I use this off of the rail. Okay, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to find the right way of showing this. It's for flooring uh, industry. Okay, see how this, there's, look, there's no, it's, it's flush cut, you can flush cut with it, okay? But think about this. Say I've laid down a floor. Ooh, do I have that flooring here? I do, give me a second. I'm just gonna go out of frame for a second. I got some flooring right here, okay? And say I've laid down a floor, 
Okay, hopefully this, is, hopefully this will do it. And this is up against the wall where the installer should have left at least, at least a half inch to three quarter. The molding covers it up. Okay, so what you want to do is, and I'm going to show you how to do this. This is what this knob's for right here. I loosen it here, okay, and I pull this knob. And that allows me to go at a minus one. So what I have to do is sometimes this floor will buckle. And if you need to repair it, this goes up against the wall. Okay, it's basically doing a false joint. But the only thing, the whole thing isn't touching just this point here. And the distance from here to the other side of the blade is 15 millimeters. So you do a 5 8 reveal cut or 15 millimeter reveal cut. Hopefully that answers the minus one and the 47 degrees to go to 47. You take it like this. There's the knob, you pull it and that allows you to go to 47. Cool? Excellent. All right, let me look. Whew, how to change a splinter guard and get it to stick. Oh my God, what a great question. Um, <clears throat> let me find the right Let's just do the one I just did uh, la, 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 that I cut this morning. I know I put it somewhere. Oh, duh, right there. Let me undo this so we get a good place to show this. I'm going to move it over. Okay. Now, you can buy, you can get splinter guides, replacement splinter guides, and someone says, when do I replace a splinter guide? I will tell you right now, when you are unsatisfied with the quality of cut. That's the best answer. I can give you, okay? The splinter guard comes in lengths of 5,000 millimeters long, 16 feet, or 55 millimeters long, right? It's a peel and stick. Now, every time I've showed somebody this, and, what, and I understand the question because it used to happen to me. Okay, watch. See this? This is how the, the splinter guard goes on, watch. You take the splinter guard, all right? You take it like this, Okay, and what I'm going to do is you always start it forward like this. Okay, and you put it on like this and you put it up against this little popping aluminum part of the extrusion. Okay, and you put it on there like this. Okay, now when I do these, I usually have it a little bit longer and then I cut it. Because remember, you're not going all the way to the end, right? So I always cut it here. And if I had gone further there, there. Now, the question is, how do I get it to stay sticking? <laughs> okay, it's easy. Okay, I think I have a piece right here. I do. See how I just tacked it on? Okay, now, if I had left that a little bit longer and I stood it up, it would peel off. And the other thing is when I put this on, watch. I take something and apply pressure all the way down like this okay that way there I spread the pressure out now, and I'll do it like this I'll start like this and go like this and then I'll come back and every time I've done that they stay stuck now in the summertime if I especially being um, building cabinets in South Florida I would leave these in my van okay guess what humidity will get to this so every once in a while if this starts to peel off a little, which didn't happen once I understood to spread the pressure out, okay, I put a little uh, uh, CA glue right there and just hold it like this and it keeps tacked on. And when you do it, you don't use the whole tube, you just put a little and it's good. Okay, wow, that was a little bit longer than we usually go. I want to say, okay, <laughs> everybody wants to know what an ABBA is <laughs> when I was changing the blade. Uh, no, it is an R, <laughs> I can't even say Arbor, whatever. It's, a, it's, not, it's not ABBA, uh, Dancing Queen Swedish group. Okay, Rick, you're a comedian. I want to say like I do every single Festool Live, I want to give a big shout out for everybody in the USA, everybody in Canada. But look who we have looking on today. We have Poland, Woo! Mexico, baby, Norway, UK, Brazil. In Miami. <laughs> All right. Everybody, I want to. Oh. Oh my God. I love it. DreamWorks wor Wood Shop. Woo! Love you guys. Hey, I, I we, 
truly feel honored to do this every Friday at noon. We'll see you next week, Friday at noon. And don't forget, if you want to see this and go back and review it, you, we're on YouTube. We post this on YouTube on Monday morning. It'll be on Facebook. And for 24 hours, you, this, you can go back and see it on our IG story. Everybody, thank you very much. And I hope this helps. <laughs>